Hey guys, before we start this episode, I wanted to talk to you about Type 1 Lifting. So Type 1 Lifting is a clothing line that proceeds of the shirts and tanks and everything else goes to the Children's Diabetes Foundation. So um, this all came about with me and seeing a five-year-old girl in the emergency department uh, that had a new onset of diabetes. So uh, just take a look at the website. It's www type1lifting.com so just check it out if you don't buy anything that's perfectly fine uh, I would just like for you just to take a look and just see what we have so like I said before www.type1lifting.com and guys I hope you enjoy the show hey guys we have a new sponsor for the type 1 lifting podcast the company's called Liberté Lifestyle so Liberté is a French word meaning freedom and the company was founded on the desire to have freedom to choose what we want to do with our lives. I actually had the owner, um, Nicole, on my podcast on episode 28, so if you want to go back and listen to her, um, she talks about how she started the company and what she wants to do in the future with the company, which is pretty cool. So uh, they actually have knee sleeves, wrist wraps, shirts, shorts. Uh, Love the knee sleeves. I have the ice cream knee sleeves, and I love them so much. They haven't The neoprene's still good. Uh, The seams haven't split compared to other uh, knee sleeves that I have had in the past. uh, And I'm planning to keep these for a very, very long time. So uh, Nicole actually gave me a promo code for you guys too. So it's all capital letters, T-Y-P-E, and the number one. So it's type one. So go to LibertéLifestyle.com. Check out what they have in the store. Use the promo code type one and save some coin. Now let's go to the episode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I have 2021 CrossFit Games athlete Caroline Connors. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so I started I started CrossFit at Misfit, which it's really cool to, to be at the same place where I, I started this, this whole journey. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't, like, jumped in anywhere else. I haven't tried any other programs. I've been you know, misfit since day one. Um, and so I, I think for me and and for everybody else, it's just a little bit more meaningful. And it's really cool to see like, it's possible to, to just work your ass off. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, you, you don't need to buy the fancy shoes or the jump rope or, you know, all this, the stuff that, you know, the typical, be, you know, beginners like, hey, what can I buy <laughs> to, to make me a better athlete? And it's, it's just, just hard work. So it's, it's been really cool. Uh, I started there in the end, at the end of 2013. So my first open was 2014. So what made you get in, what made you go to the gym in the first place? Um, so I was, my background is competitive cheerleading. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did that throughout elementary school, middle school, high school. And then after high school, I continued on for a couple of years. Um, and then from there I was, just kind of doing my own I, I've always enjoyed fitness um and so I was just kind of doing my own running at home you know planet fitness lifting weights yeah. all that all that type of stuff and it just gets boring yeah. um and so I had gone to I dropped into a gym in Florida with a friend of mine um I had never done CrossFit or anything like that never heard of it um and I dropped in there to try a class and just was kind of like okay this is this is for me like i love this this is great the community like you just the the community is just so amazing like you walk into a gym and everybody's like hey like we're all here for the same thing and when you know going into a a typical globo gym or or whatever it's just you know everybody's got their headphones in and keep them to themselves so you know there's nothing wrong with that but i'm just more more of that type of person that thrives off of you know the community of it all so dropped in there and then um after that i had kind of started doing crossfit on my own at home just like random youtube videos and and stuff like that (laughs) um and i had posted online somewhere about like hey was there a crossfit gym in the area that somebody recommends and it was uh crossfit mf at the time so they somebody pointed me in that direction i 
I showed up to the gym one afternoon and, and Gabe, Gabe Hunter and Sherb were there middle of the afternoon working out. And I was like, can I, I think I want to join the gym. Can I, like, what can I do? And <laughs> so I talked, <laughs> I spoke with Gabe for a little bit and signed up right there. Did my first workout there with, with Hunter. Um, and then just, I've been hooked ever since. Very cool. So, so it's it, it really, really cool. So when you were at the global gym, were you reading like, you know, women's fitness or anything like that to get workouts or like, what was the, <laughs> what was the plan? Cause like, no, I had, I had no plan. So primarily, and, and this kind of started in high school, I would go to the gym before I went to school and just like run, run on the treadmill and, and the elliptical and all that mostly cardio stuff. And then afterwards I would just do like curls and presses. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't even remember where I got these workouts i just like did things that i saw people do yep. and that was it <laughs> <laughs> so obviously when you first started crossfit you know when you have like that one hard workout that like buried you like what made you get like the you know energy to say hey i want to come back here tomorrow and do the same thing over again um Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. I think we all know like that feeling It's CrossFitters, especially when you do those workouts and you always feel like, oh my God, that's terrible. But it takes like two seconds for you to be like, that was awesome. Yeah. Like I want to feel like this again. And I think the that instant feedback of like, okay, what you're doing is, is working um, is kind of what gravitated me towards, you know, going back over and over again. And that, that feeling of uh, success and accomplishment of you know, you, you feel like you did a workout regardless whether it was three minutes or 20 minutes, you know, and you don't really get that when you are doing stuff on your own or don't know what you're doing, I guess, for that matter. So you can run slowly on a treadmill for 45 minutes and be like, oh, I did it. And then go do, you know, Fran for the first time RX and you're like, holy shit. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's what it feels like to really push yourself outside of that, you know, comfortable zone. Um, so yeah, I, I think that feeling of, you you finish the workout and you feel like you did yeah um is is you know what primarily what kind of kept pulling me back all right I, so i have a question so i have this thing when i push really hard my left ear starts like clogging and like popping does that happen to you because i've heard other people get the same exact thing no no okay all right because no. i was because i was listening to a, uh, a podcast with matt frazier on it the matt frazier josh bridges and savan podcast and uh -huh. Matt was like, if I push really hard, my left ear will start like clogging up. And so I was like, okay, really? well, it happens to me too. So I wonder what's the reason. And if it's any other CrossFitter that does the same, that has the same issue. I don't know. I've never heard of that. Yeah. That's interesting. Because, because every time I work, like if I work out really hard and push myself, I'm like, like during a workout, I'll just like start like clogging up and I'm like, all right, you know, I, I, I used the Q-tips last night, so it should be good. So I don't know what the deal is. So. Sometimes I've I've gone through workouts with like wall balls and sweat drips inside of my ear. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't I don't think that they've ever clogged up. <laughs> okay, ran, random story. Don't worry, all good. <laughs> so I guess you're on track to be the next Matt Fraser. I yeah, guess. that's that's no chance. I'm six six. That's not gonna happen. So, um, so what what made you stick with Misfit Athletics? Was it like the the group? The you know what was what was it for you? It was the people, hundred percent. Yeah. The people, members, and coaches were just amazing. Like, yeah. there was not a time where you walked into the gym and didn't feel welcomed. People weren't, like, helping you. And you, you see that so often now, which to me is, is backwards, where you go to like, drop in a gym and nobody's there to, like, say, hey, how you know how's it going? Nice to meet you. Yep. It's, like, it's mind-blowing that not every gym is – like ours. And I guess I'm a little biased because I think our gym is the best gym in the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, the people a hundred percent, like from the very beginning, and we still have a, a good group of our, you know, our OGs that started from the beginning back in like Drew's garage. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, we've had a very steady, you know, 10 years of, you know, keeping the same people and accumulating people that you know, vibe really well with our, with our group. And it's just, it just keeps getting better and better. The, the community is amazing. Yeah. And I, I remember the original gym CrossFit F MF that it was like ginormous. And then you yep. guys moved to a, you actually have two locations now, 
uh, CrossFit Wyndham, and then Cross like uh, just CrossFit Misfit Athletics, and then in Portland. Yep. So, like, what was your experience like seeing the, the gym grow to like two locations, and you know, seeing like it how was... big the Misfit got? Yeah, it, it's been a really cool experience, especially coming from being a member, like being a, a very new beginner, then going to get my L1 and then starting to coach and then starting to become, you know, more important in, you know, misfit athletic roles and sharpen yaks and all that stuff. Um, but just seeing from like the the back seat what these guys and, and Jen have done to grow the business and be successful has been so amazing. Like it was a clubhouse when, you know, where we were at, for, at first, which is like all CrossFit gyms kind of started out that way. Yeah. Um, and then they've, you know, built this amazing building and the, not only just like having a better space and, you know, newer equipment and keeping things nice, the amount of effort that they put into their coaching staff and how they, uh, you know, how they teach us and, and the continuing education and how much they care about the product that they give out um, has grown an insane amount. They've, they've been, you know, very diligent in keeping the practice up to date and making sure that their, their staff is doing, you know, putting the work in and that we're not only being successful coaches, but we have all the resources that we need to, to, you know, give these members the best experience possible. Yeah, very cool. So it's been really cool to, to see them grow as, you know, a business and, you know, leaders for sure. Mm, very cool. So um, you talked about you getting your L1. So when, obviously, like, did you get it, like, within the next couple, like, in the couple months of when you started? Or, like, what was, how was the process with that? I believe I went and got my L1 in 2014. So that was the following year. Um, and then from there, I started coaching primarily. I started shadowing actually my fiance <laughs> in Wyndham. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. He, thank you. He, Austin, was coaching in Wyndham. I started shadowing his early morning classes. Um, and then I started coaching over there and then slowly started moving over to Portland. And now I, I kind of go back and forth from both. And how, how far of a distance is it for both of them, both those gyms? It, they're about 20 minutes apart. Oh, okay, that's good. So, and, and I live right in the middle, so it's not bad at all. Perfect. Yeah, very cool. So what was your – what is the way that you kind of teach your, you know, gym members of, like, how to move or, like, certain movements and, like, and scaling-wise? So primarily – it's it's actually nice because I I do coach most of our beginners too in in that one location actually. And your kids but, and the kids too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I run a the kids program in Wyndham, which is a whole other yeah. you know part of my life. It's it's amazing. Um, but I mean, first we we preach you know safety and move functional movement over anything. So if somebody comes in and they can't squat below parallel body weight, like they're not going to get any weight on. It's just that's it. And there's a lot of it does take, you know, a level of confidence to be like, Hey, I'm sorry, but you can't like, we're going to take weight off. We need to back down a little bit. Um, and I, I feel like that is something that a lot of coaches and a lot of gyms are lacking. Um, and it's more of like an organized free for all mm -hmm. <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we've been very good about making sure that all of our coaches and all of our members, when they walk into the gym, like they know this is how it's going to be. Yeah. You're going to learn how to move your body safely, you know, through the range of motion that you're supposed to, and then we can progress from there. So we're, we're, we're very strict about, about that while still making it, you know, fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I hear you. So I, I used to teach class two as well. And it's hard. Like you have like 20 people or whatever trying to do a movement and it's hard to kind of like walk up to that person and be like, Hey, you know, you might want to cut it down a little bit, but like, I obviously yeah. it's good to do that. It's like, Hey, this is not really that weight's not for you. Just lower it. Just work on the form. But it's, it, it is hard just to look at all 20 plus people in the gym and just kind of like critique everybody at once. Right. We've also, so a couple of things that we've done as uh, an affiliate is one, our classes are capped now. So we try not to have more than at most, which only one of our classes are super early morning classes, really only the one that's like at times 20 people. Um, but that is 
the, the top cap. So we've capped it and, um, oh, what was I just going to say? Totally lost. How many lost people you got in your gym? Yeah, we have a lot of people in the gym, but we've, we've, <laughs> capped, we've <laughs> capped classes, um, and, oh, the RX. So we, we've gotten away from, you know, people putting RX and scaled like next to their workouts. So we have the, we have them written on the board, like, you know, the RX weight would be, or the, you know, the written workout is at this weight. Um, but when I first started CrossFit, it was, you know, everybody's name on the whiteboard, we take down their scores and there was those little RXs next to their names, mm. totally gotten rid of that. Yeah. Um, which has been a huge turning point. Um, and it's been so great for, for our members because they see the names on the board, they see the times, but they have no idea how people scaled, how people modified, and they still have that competitive, you know, nature with certain people. So people are scaling appropriately now because the ego isn't there. Yep. Um, so I think that was, you know, a really important thing that we did for our members and it's been really, really successful. Very cool. Yeah. Cause I, I, I don't feel like anybody wants to be embarrassed when they put scaled on the right. board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just not chasing the RX is, you know, been so beneficial for everybody. Yeah. And how many classes do you teach like roughly a week or like per day? Cause I know, I know you used to, I, I, I know you used to teach the more early morning classes. So what is it like now? So currently I am doing three classes, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday morning, and then two kids classes on Sundays. Um, and then I coach one evening class mid afternoon on Tuesday, Thursday, um, or Tuesday, Friday leading up to the games. Um, I'm just going to be coaching my normal morning classes and then I'll go back to that schedule after the, the training's back down. Very cool. So speaking about going to the game, so, I, I, I see you every time, like on Instagram, it's like, I see you just get like, you're the type of person that I think is every day you'd get better, like 1% better every, every day. And like, you've had a long path to get to where you are now. So, you know, obviously there, I, I listened to the podcast that you were on with, with Misfit like just today. Um, mm -hmm. And it's obviously a lot of things have changed from the beginning of your CrossFit journey to now. So what was that path like for you? Um, I feel like now I am more mature athlete for sure. Um, and I kind of understand not only from experiencing it myself, but seeing everybody around me, um, that, you know, lifestyle and goals and all that stuff, they, if they don't line up, then you're never going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, so where I'm at now is, is completely different from where I was training wise uh, you know, over the last few years, I think probably within the last three years, I, I've shifted a little bit. Um, but more so in the last year and a half, two years is, is where the, the change kind of took place. So I would, I wouldn't say I would overtrain because I wasn't like, you know, injured, fatigued, anything like that. But a lot of my time was spent like, you know, coach, workout, 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 <laughs> coach. Yep go home, not get enough sleep and then repeat. Um, and there, there's a point where you, you know, you can only do that for so long and until it's detrimental. Mm -hmm. And so over the, I guess, since COVID really, that, I think that's really when I kind of realized that like, Hey, I am still strong. I can still do gymnastics. I can still crush Metcons. And all I've been doing is, endurance and some like a little bit of weightlifting and you know whatever metcons we could do with what we had while we were out so i i wasn't as stressed out about what i was doing and like missing out on certain things so once i kind of came to that realization and when i started seeing how much progress i was making on the the longer endurance type things like on the rower and the bike and all that um it was reassuring and motivating for me to kind of take that step back and have a much better like workout training and personal life and work balance. So where I'm at now, everything is you know, kind of in prime balance for me. Mm -hmm. I'm able to, you know, get my coaching done. I prioritize when I can get my training in without feeling rushed. And then you know, I, I leave myself a bigger window for all of the other things that I need to get done. 
um, which before it was like, I get home and I'm scrambling, yeah. you know, staying up late, trying to get things done. Um, and then that time to, to decompress before bed and all of that has been very beneficial mm-hmm. and so important. And it, it makes a big difference. Like I, I know people and, and yourself probably hear this all the time, but like sleep is, is just so important to recovery and training yep. and just like your, your mental well-being, well-being. Um, so I think that is one thing that has helped me a ton. Um, I also started working with Mike Malloy from M2 Performance um, right before we started, I believe December of 19. So I was working with him up until Atlas Games, kind of dialing in my nutrition, my sleep, the mental you know side of things and, and learning how to deal with stress. Um, and you know that's kind of where I was, I think that's what helped me get to the point before Atlas Games where I was like, I'm ready to do this. Like I, I had the feeling that it was going to be my year and then it got shut down. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I kind of had to reevaluate and COVID happened. And whereas for a lot of people that was a very negative experience, it ends up being a really positive experience for me in some ways. Yeah. Um, so it, yeah, over the, the last year and a half or so balance in life, work, training, you know, food, all that stuff has kind of fallen into place. Um, and I just have a lot more time to like think about everything rather than just like check off the list. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the Atlas games, so I, you almost, you almost got locked in Canada kind of almost, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. I want to know how close it would have been, yeah. but so we were there, they got, they canceled it the the night of athlete briefing and then we were it was late we decided we just wanted to stay we were going to stay for two days um because we had the airbnb anyways so we stayed the next day and it's like everything almost it was just like an avalanche everybody was like you need to leave (laughs) they're talking about closing the borders like and we were like oh my god we need to go so it was kind of like pack our bags get in the car, go, because we were not going to get stuck in, in Montreal for whoever knows how long. Yeah, I can't, so imagine, it was a wild yeah, I can't imagine like getting locked in Montreal. And I know, I know I, in the, in the podcast, Drew was like driving around trying to find a parking spot. Then he just like turned around yeah. and left. Yep. Just, yeah, <laughs> there was nothing, nothing left to, to do there. So I don't blame him. Yeah. So after the Atlas games got canceled, like, what was your mindset throughout that? Like, you were like, okay, I was like, you were primed, ready to go, and then the can't get canceled. So what was it going through your mind? So at first, we started getting notifications and all that, like, hey, we might need to make adjustments. We might need to, you know, make some changes. And then all of a sudden, like, I got like that pit in my stomach, like, all of this hard work it's going to be like for nothing. Oh my God. Like it was just kind of like a shock, but then it happened and it was just kind of like, well, it is what it is. Like everybody had to go home. This is just going to keep happening. And then I believe after that, so we had other events lined up. Um, like I think it was the Asbury park games in West Co- uh, some somewhere in Canada um, for, for teams. So we kind of had a little bit of hope that we would still be able to compete. I, I think this was after the Atlas games. I'm not okay. sure if it was before or not. Um, so it was just like, it is what it is. And we, we got home and then from there, everything else happened so fast. I don't think we had time to really think about competitions. Like our, our affiliates were starting to close we had to start taking on, you know, zoom classes with our members and like figure out who's doing this, who's going to be where. And so the, the focus kind of shifted almost immediately, which I think was, was a good thing. Yeah. It, it was less about us and more about them. Um, so that did make it a little bit easier to be like, okay, there's, there are, you know, other, there are more important things to, to worry about than, you know, just a competition that would have been great, but there will be more. <laughs> yeah. So what was the, what were the zoom classes like for you? Obviously like 
because you have some people that have all the equipment they need and then some people right. didn't. So how did you manage like all those people all at once? So our coaching staff took turns writing at home workouts. So we each took like a full week, rewrote them um, with pretty much body weight, minimal, minimal equipment, anything that we could think of to be creative, like jump over whatever you have for box jumps, like yeah. whatever you got, use it. Um, so we took turns doing that, which was great. And then we had a schedule. I, I want to say one, two, three, maybe five classes throughout the day mm -hmm. that we kind of took turns coaching. So I was still doing the morning classes and people would wake up and we would turn on our computers and <laughs> I'd go over the workout with them. Um, and it actually worked out really well. At first, I think people were like, how is this going to work? Yeah. But at that point, like just seeing everybody and people being able to interact with each other was like, I think all that they needed. So it, it ended up working out really well. People still got really good workouts in. We were able to get creative with it. Um, and we had a, a really good participation level. So it worked out really well. That's awesome. Yeah, I like I like seeing that kind of stuff too, and especially with Zoom. You can interact with anybody, like you said before, so which is really right. cool. So yeah. now I kind of want to talk about the Granite, Granite Games. So okay. obviously you placed fifth. Congra I'm, I'm really happy for you. That, that was super awesome. Thank you. So what was you know the process like getting up to the G Granite Games for you? So going into this year, it was a little challenging at first because i was you know up until this point i was banking on the open yeah pretty much i i kind of thrived on those those comp co those online qualifiers i would always place really well and so this year was a little bit different because when i was peaking and training was not during the open it really wasn't during quarterfinals either so I had to, to trust the process a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and thankfully, having conversations with Drew and, you know, people around me made it a lot easier to, you know, kind of just push, you know, the ego off to the side and just accept like, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm supposed to be. And then when I'm ready, and I'm, you know, at that peak, it's going to be when it matters. So my open finish was I think like one twenty or something like that, um, and then my quarterfinals I was like sixty four, and then so from there I was kind of like, all right, well I'm, I know I'm going to qualify. I know like, sure I would have loved to be like top five, top ten, top twenty, whatever for mm -hmm. quarterfinals, but this is you know this is good. This is where I'm going to be. Now we amp it up. So trusting the process to, you know, continue to not get too worried about where I am at that very moment was big for me mentally. Um, and then after quarterfinals, it was just, okay, this is go time. I've got one shot. Yep. <laughs> we can't, we can't pick multiple sanctionals to go to. We can't, you know, have more than one shot at this unless you get the all night, the last chance qualifier. Um, and I think in my head, knowing that I had I had a feeling that Granite Games was the the way to go for me. I don't know why. I, I first was like, do I go virtual because I get to stay at home, be comfortable in my own house, I don't have to worry about food. And then on the other hand, I was like, well, this could be my only shot at competing live. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like the adrenaline yeah. that you get in a live competition, regardless of you know where you're at. So we decided to to pick that first. So that was my first choice. Um, so I was super happy that I got that. And I think like once we got the invitations and all that, you just, the excitement and the adrenaline and the, the push factor just increases and yeah. increases. So yes, I was doing a lot of training on my own. Um, but I kind of think that that was good for me. I've, I've always been somebody who, you know, when training with other people just kind of has like one one setting yep. and it's just go. Yep. <laughs> so it, I was able to kind of learn how to pace differently and, you know, how to approach workouts in different, different ways because I didn't have 
you know, that person next to me who was getting too close and like, you know, would make me go out too hot or, you know, something like that. So it was really good for, for me to be able to train on my own and still push as much as I could without having that, you know, that other person there. Um, so when I did, it, it was also hard too, like not knowing like, okay, I feel like I'm doing good, but I have nobody to compare to. Yeah. Um, and then every so often when Austin and I, when our schedules lined up and we trained together, we would, always, we would both always end up pretty similar. So we're like, I think we're doing good. <laughs> we don't have any, like, are we doing good? Is this a good score? Are we, you know, are we fit right now? And then uh, just getting confirmation from, you know, Drew and Hunter and Sherb, like when doing workouts with them every once in a while or them just watching and them being like, whoa, like, okay, that's, that's all we needed to hear. Yeah. We're, we're okay right now. So do you, do you schedule t- like times with other athletes, like that are following the program with you? Up until this point, no. Okay. So okay. there were, there are times where like, if I'm, if I'm in Portland, cause I kind of go back and forth. Um, if I'm in Portland and they're, you know, the guys are around, I'll, I'll ask them to jump in with me and if they can, they will. Um, but leading up from now until the games, there will be like a a little schedule where they can pick and choose which, who's going with me, where, when, (laughs) um, so it will be, yeah, it'll be a lot more structured as far as, you know, having training partners and, and all that. So, yeah. So what was your, what was your thoughts like going towards the end? Cause I know, the two part workout. I was actually nervous because with the wall balls. Oh yep. yep. You and me both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously uh, you did really well in the next workout. But uh, what? I mean, what was your thought with the wall balls? You're like, and and also the heat too because it was so damn hot down over there. It it was, and on I didn't really think about the heat all that much until I was, you know, on to the next two movements that's when it really like just hits you in the face, hard to breathe. Um, but yeah, no, during those wall balls, I, I don't know. I just struggle so much having that floating target. That's not sure if I'm supposed to hit it or the number or hit where to hit it. And also like, it's just was, I was just so unbalanced the whole time. It's yeah. like, I had never, I, I just, I was not successful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at that point, like throughout the first set, I was like, okay, this is, this is how this workout's going to be. So I need to do as much as I can not get frustrated because there is a whole, there's a hundred more points that I can get after this. Yep. So I tried, I, you know, it was helpful. I had, uh, Drew and Hunter right out in front of me in my lane. And there were a couple moments where I was like, felt sorry for myself and I looked up and they're like, you are okay. You're doing great. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, but thank you. I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> um, so yeah, at that point I was like, I just need to, I just need to get through as much as I can. Yeah. Um, and then two minute reset. I threw that workout out the window it was gone. And I just knew that I had to make the next one hurt really bad if I wanted to you know, make up what I could. And at that point, I wasn't sure if I would be able to, um, just point wise. I, I didn't know how the other heats went, but in my head, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to get last in this workout. And I took 29th. <laughs> yeah. So it was a, it was a quick turnaround, but it, it pushed me to to do what I needed to for that next one. Yeah. And the points actually helped out because you got, a, you placed second in the last, the second part of that workout which right. obviously pushed your points up, points up even higher, which is instead of like being yeah. like, you know, 18th place or 18th place or like 10th place, like both times. Sure. So, yep. Yeah. Very cool. And plus you're five one, right? So that was obviously like throwing a 20 pound wall ball up 10 feet is like not the greatest, you know, workout. For right. You. Yep. If in case you were wondering, I've already done a workout with high wall balls since I've been home. So nice have you done, <laughs> work in progress. Have you done 11 feet? No, not yet. <laughs> Are you still, are you using the 20 pound wall ball? I will, um, you know, here and there, but it will, it'll probably come, come and go for, for the first, you know, little while Mm -hmm. just to, to figure out the movement first, you know? Yeah. And so, so (laughs) after that, 
after that, you know, you got you got another workout, did really well, placed fifth. Obviously, like you had a lot of emotions, even like Drew, Hunter, Sherb, and all those guys. So, what was it? What was the emotions going for you? Um, oh God, I think every emotion possible. I was, I still wasn't a hundred percent. Like I knew what I needed to do to get to to get into fifth, but there's still always a little bit of of. There's a part of you that's like, did this happen? Did something else happen to to change the points? So I, I was I was just waiting for them to call my name. Yeah. So I was sitting there, hoping like, what are they what are they going to say? Are they going to say my name? Is it me? And I was just like running through the scenario in my head over and over again. And it's almost like when they called my name, no, like everybody else around me just like was gone, and I was just like in the this bubble of light. <laughs> is the only way I can explain it. Yeah. Um, just so, so much pride and just that feeling of like everything that I have done has paid off. Nothing has compared to that, that feeling when you can honestly look at the outcome of a situation and just think like, I did that. Like I did everything that I needed to, to get this outcome. And then to see you know, everybody that was there for me that weekend in front of me, like they all played a part in, in my success. And it was like, we, we all came together and everything came together exactly how it needed to. Um, So it just, it really meant a lot. It was really, really cool for, for that to, to happen. And you worked super hard to get there too. Super hard. Yeah. It's so um, the Granite Games actually posted a picture a po- on Instagram about you after you won it. So you're like, you know, hands up in the air and like, you know, you had your hands down and your fa- like, you know, hands in your face and just mm-hmm. crying a little bit. So do you still have that emotion once in a while? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so I, I when I got my email with my invitation to register, I cried more than I did <laughs> when I got when I when they called my name and it's just everything that I've gone through the last two years. It's just been like one thing after another that I've had to, you know, kind of push through and, and challenges and in, in my personal life and, you know, everything that I talked about with balance and stress and to know that it was all, I, I, I got through that and I got through like the hard parts, you know, not only in the gym, but outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all, that's, that's, it all comes back to me when I see those pictures and the videos and it just, it feels so good. I'm just unbelievably proud of, of, you know, what I've been able to do over the last few years and so grateful for everybody that's been in my corner the whole time. Yeah. You need to print those pictures out and put them up on the wall. Oh yeah, for sure. So So yeah, I'm sure my parents have already done that. So, so now you're going to the CrossFit Games. So, and you talked about how you're kind of like still coaching in the morning, but like training more in the afternoon. So, what are what's the schedule looking like for you? Are you doing like three workouts a day, or what is it? So, um, it will vary day to day. My my volume will probably be pretty similar to how it was leading up to quarter fi- quarterfinals. But, um, yeah, so I coach my morning classes, which are you know five, six, and nine a.m. So I'm done coaching by 10. Sometimes I'll get a lift in, um, in between those classes if, if I have time to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but there will be days where it's, you know, a lift or two and then two or three conditioning pieces. And then there will be other days where it's, you know, a longer endurance day, more swimming, um, stuff like that. And, and a couple of, you know, shorter, shorter stuff. But um, the goal is to successfully crush metcons and and aerobic stuff and uh not beat the crap out of myself a, a little oh, bit but not, not, not yeah, too yeah. much yeah <laughs> so are you doing a lot of odd objects too yeah yep sandbag sled uh i guess we could probably throw heavy wall balls to a 20 foot target or something in there <laughs> <laughs> um there will be some some hill running and you know weighted stuff 
get overs, all that. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Which that, that's the fun stuff. That's what I, I'm really excited for all of that. Yeah. Are you going to be doing a little bit of rock running too? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, 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 I heard on the podcast uh, before that you are going to start loving swimming a little bit more. So how's, how's that going so far? Uh, well, it hasn't started yet. We, so because of COVID, it's been super difficult to, and this is just the first week back. So I, I had plans to go on a Tuesday, um, and we had to like reserve lanes and they were all booked up because of COVID and all that. So things are, yeah, things are starting to open up now. Um, it's still a little too cold in the open water. Yeah. Otherwise I would, I would do that. But in the next few weeks we'll, we'll be out in the open water anyways. So, um, this week I have a 500 meter time trial, so I will update on how that goes. <laughs> Very cool. So throughout your whole process of you getting to the games, you've had like other CrossFit athletes like China Cho, Mackenzie Riley, Paige, and like Cody Mooney. So what what was their ex- like? Did they talk about their experience to you, or kind of like you know give their two cents about the CrossFit games and their experience? Um, a little bit. I haven't really talked to them too much about the games themselves. Um, but you know, I, I've seen Cody compete since, you know, he qualified in, you know, 2014, I think, or, or 2015, 16. Um, and I've kind of seen, seen him training and his journey there. And, you know, I've been keeping up with Kenzie and China and all of that. And it's just been, it's been super, they each have different, much different stories in, yeah. in my eyes, like seeing, you know, the way that Kenji, Kenzie approaches her training or, or did before, you know, she had race and, you know, that was like, she did everything to the T, you know, gymnastics coach, you know, she did her, you know, endurance work, her accessory, all this, whereas, you know, other, you know, Cody or, or China, I'm not too familiar with, with China's training, but it was just a lot of different uh, situations that I could look at and, you know, see, kind of realize, like, honestly, it was my own, my own path. And I needed to not focus so much on, oh, I need to do everything like these people. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really cool to kind of, you know, see all of these different athletes make it to the CrossFit games, but they all did for the most part, very different things, you know, whether it was the programming or, you know, whatever they were doing, you know, from sunrise to sundown. Um, So, yeah, I haven't quite talked to them about the game's experience yet, Um, but I'm sure we will, we will chat about that in the future. Very cool. Are you really excited about um, Wisconsin, obviously like Wisconsin, the dome to get underneath the lights and have like, they, 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 I guess supposedly they have it at 70% capacity, but they're saying by the time the games are open, it's probably going to be a hundred percent capacity. Oh, that's going to be so cool. Yeah. I, I, I was actually there two years ago with Paige. So I went with her as her coach. Um, and being there was such a cool experience. And then I kind of got, got there and was like, wow, I like, I wish that I was able to go out there and do this workout. And like, I, I, I need, I need to, I need to go there. Like yeah, I need to, yeah. to, to work my ass off. And like this, that is the goal. I want to be out there. Um, so I'm super excited and I'm hoping that now being the first year since, you know, everything was shut down and they had to make all of those adjustments. It's going to be a really good, awesome showing. Yeah. I, t- I totally agree. So who, who is the coach that's going to be going to the games with you? Is it going to be Drew? Yeah. So yep. is, the, is the whole team coming or what's the, yeah, everybody will be there um, every year they go. So it looks like, honestly, we'll probably have to shut down the gym. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think this year, not only the coaches, but a lot of our members are like, tickets are tickets are paid for, we're booked, we're going. Um, so yeah, Drew will, prim- Drew will be my coach there. Um, sure, we'll probably be going with, with Roy, um, I would assume. And then the, the whole crew goes um, every year regardless. So yeah. Jen, Ed Hunter, they're all, they'll all be there. Very cool. So what, what makes Drew a good coach? What makes Drew Hunter and Sherb like a good coach in your mind? 
they each it's almost like the the three of them combined is it's the best of their three worlds like they each if i could pull three different things from you know three different hats that i needed in one it would probably be those three drew is he knows what i need without telling him like always whether it's i need a distraction or i have too many distractions or like this didn't go well i don't want to talk about it but you know that i need to so you know he <laughs> kind of makes me yep. talk about those things um and then sherb and hunter both are very are very good at like hey this is what i want you to do or this is what you need to do to prepare for for this um or you know with it, it's it's hard to explain yeah. <laughs> they each they each have their own unique ability to make me feel like i am the best and i belong here and they especially you know as of late they I'm never alone like in if I'm training or you know I'm about to do something like hey what are you going to do like let me know when and I'll do it with you and you know they're just always there it's like you turn around they're standing there you didn't know that they were there <laughs> they're yeah. they're always there um so yeah they're I, I honestly couldn't ask for a better group behind me yeah I, I'm sure Sherv if, he, if there's a deadlift competition dev, deadlift workout Sherv's definitely into that one Oh yeah, for sure. Always. He, he likes the ones where he has a chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Very cool. So, um, obviously you talked earlier about sharpen the ax. So what, what's your involvement with sharpen the ax? So, um, right now I, I am just one of their, one of their athletes that, you know, promotes the, the clothing. It's all I wear really. Um, and so that's, that's the extent of that. <laughs> with them um but i i try to really promote them as well as i can um and i think it works a lot of people like using code carol yes. <laughs> which isn't my name but people love it yeah i i love their gear too so like obviously i have a t-shirt company but you know i have joggers t-shirts like stickers patches like you know mm -hmm. you name it like i'm i'm on the bandwagon pretty much so you could say so i mean I, I just love this style. Do you do you do you have to do they put I'm sorry. Do they give you like a two cents to like, you know, hey, maybe you want to do it this way instead of that way? Yes, all the time. So the the nice thing about Sharpen the Axe is that they are constantly working on making better products and getting feedback from not only like myself, but the members and the the people in the community. What did you like about this? Why do you like this, you know? company better for this product what is it about it um so they're constantly picking everybody's brains and trying to you know improve what they're putting out so they put a lot of time into it yes I, um, they told me yeah they do a lot of time so who knows maybe maybe there will be a special edition caroline connor's clothing line down the road <laughs> <laughs> very cool so um we're getting close to the end um so what are your um, thoughts on, you know, like, do you have like a specific like workout or piece that you want to be included into the games? Ooh, that's a good question. Honestly, I just want a good race. Like anything, I would love to race some of these athletes with like something simple, thrusters, chest to bar pull-ups fran-esque type workouts okay yeah stuff like that but i also really love the high skill like legless rope climbs and you know muscle ups and stuff like that so i out of i definitely want to see you know one on each on each ends of the spectrum you know a high skill and then just like put your head down go as fast as you can very cool do you think they're going to do the cuts like they did like a couple of years ago I don't think so. I hope not. Um, and it seems like the with the number of people that they're taking that they wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. um, all I know is that I, I at least in my opinion think that that was a mistake <laughs> the first year around. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to figure there's how many people all at once. 
like 160 or something. 160 just on the men's side and 140 on the women's side. And then you have to yeah. cut it down to, you know, like 40 people. So, I mean, I kind of understand that route, but yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate, especially being there, being there as a coach for Paige. And just like, it's devastating yeah. when you don't get a chance to really perform and do what you came there to do, you know? So I hope that that was a one and done type of thing. Yeah. So, um, I kind of want to talk about Austin. So he, you guys are engaged. So mm -hmm. I know you said you shadowed him earlier. So how did you guys officially like start dating or how did he woo you to start dating you? So at first it was, we, so what, what happened? We, we were both actually dating other people. And then um, we ended up doing like some team competitions together, or, like a team of four. We had, we went down to Vermont, and uh, that one was individual. What four of us drove down together to compete, and then we did like a team series with the four of us. And it was always just like a, a friend. We were just friends. Yeah, really didn't think much of it. Um, and then as I started like shadowing him, and we started to train together more, it just kind of like sparked an interest um and then it was just so easy from there i don't we we would stretch together and just we would just laugh that's that's how that's all i remember is that like we would just laugh constantly and when i get laughing i get laughing like i can't stop there's no <laughs> stopping me <laughs> um and he would just make me laugh all the time um and yeah that's that the rest is history <laughs> yeah very cool very cool and he's going to the last chance qualifier too so are you going to be like helping him out through the whole process or yeah yeah right now for him he's still working full-time as an arborist um so throughout the throughout the next couple of weeks it's going to be ba like just balanced for him making sure that he's getting into the gym and getting you know a really really good metcon in working hard getting his you know heart rate up staying healthy as, as healthy as he can because he's you know kind of dealing with a couple of nagging injuries at the moment but um yeah i i'm gonna try to be as optimistic for him as possible while i know it, it's difficult to like hold back and not be able to do certain movements mm -hmm. it's not going to matter what movements he does from this point until then um he just needs to keep you know getting his his fitness in which i think once we once he starts getting back into that routine over this next week coming off of granite games and getting back to work. Um, he'll be in a, in a good spot. Yeah. And I've seen him grow from, you know, when he first started to now, it's like, Holy crap. His quads are so goddamn huge. He's got, yeah, nobody, his legs are insane. It's, I, I was like, like, the those, of the gym. Yeah. How does he, <laughs> how does he fit in the sharp? How does he fit in the misfit shorts? They're like, it's impossible. You should see him fit into like jeans. There, that's impossible. Yeah, that is impossible. <laughs> I mean, I have I have a hard time putting it dress pants on once in a while because they're so tight. I can't imagine him. It's it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare. I can't even think about finding a tux for the wedding. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he he probably has to get them custom made. Probably <laughs> like parachute pants, really. Yeah, yeah, MC Hammer pants. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So um, you have the sharp and the axe tattoo on your wrist. Oh, not your wrist, though, your forearm. So yep. what made you get that and kind of what is, you know, sharp and the axe like to you? So Austin and I, after regionals in 20, I think it might have been 2017. Was that in Albany? My first, what's that? Was it, it was in Albany, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, that was my first year individual and that was his second year individual. We got home, you know, fresh off the competition floor. I was like, well, let's go get tattoos. So we went together and, and he's got his on his calf, but it's really that, that motto of, um, you know, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four sharpening the ax is something that, you know, you can apply to anything in your life. Um, and what we kind of, our relationship that we've built, you know, with each other and with the gym and with, you know, our coaches and with ourselves, it all kind of stems from that, from that motto. And so we were like, Let, let's do this. It's, it's a constant reminder. Like, you know, you're, 
you're not going to get anywhere if you just chip away at something without making any changes or without spending time where you need to to get there. Um, so it's it's a cool reminder to see that, you know, when I just look down every time. Yeah. And, and I see it a lot when I work out, which is it's just cool. Very cool. So do you have any other tattoos? I do. Um, I have one, two, three, four, four tattoos. All right, cool. Very cool. That was Austin's first. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any. I'm kind of nervous. Plus, I'm 41, so I don't know if I'm gonna get like the midlife crisis and start just getting a crazy, Ooh, yes, a crazy like arm tattoo or something like that. I, I don't know. We'll Go say. for a sleeve. Yeah, no way. My <laughs> wife would kill me. <laughs> so, um, so we have a couple questions left. So, um, let's just say you know <clears throat> your whole CrossFit experience is done. How do you want people to know you as at, in the CrossFit space? Um, just as the girl who was very self-conscious and didn't want to put on any muscle, didn't want to put on any weight, didn't really want to do anything that was out of the norm, and then just put that in the past and started, you know, loving the strength that you can, you know, build as a human and the confidence that you can build and, you know, just proof that if you work hard and you set your mind on something and you trust the people around you that are there to help you, anything is possible. I mean, it was, I've been doing CrossFit for seven years, seven years in the same place with the same people, slowly sharpening the ax yep. to, to achieve my, my goal. And now I'm here. Now I'm going to the CrossFit Games. Awesome. So it, it's a it's been a really cool journey. Yeah. So do you have like a favorite book to you that you like to read at all? Or oh, I wish I could say I did. I'm not a huge reader. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge reader. One book that we it kind of got passed down from you know Drew and and Matt and Hunter to pretty much all of all of their athletes that they you know, see, want to be successful is the, uh, the obstacle is the way yep. by Ryan Holiday. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that is one that I would suggest everybody reads, especially if they are, you know, someone who struggles with the whole mindset of, you know, what it takes to, to be successful. And, you know, you are going to be faced with challenges and you need to learn how to work through them and, and know that that's how you grow rather than it being a negative thing. Very cool. Very cool. So, Obviously, you know, you've already one, – one of the questions is, like, what are, what are your goals for this year? Obviously, you've already hit one. So do you have, like, any other goals, like, personal-wise, like, fitness-wise or, like, even, like, business-wise? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely have my, my very specific, like, games goals. Um, but I, I've – I know that training is a priority and all that stuff, but I do want to continue to grow my CrossFit kids class and make sure that at yes, sure. In the next like month or so, my, my coaching role will be, you know, down a little bit, but that is still just like a huge part in, in my success. And it's not just a paycheck for me, Yeah, these, these members and the classes that I coach, keep me motivated and they are a constant reminder like I am you know a, a person that people are looking up to and that people you know see as a role model and especially these kids like that is one of the most rewarding things ever is you know the running the kids class and seeing them come in and this one little girl is just so sweet and she talks about in class how she's confident now and she she's I think like six, six years old. And, and she's writing, you know, to her teachers about how, you know, her CrossFit classes have made her confident to be able to like read in school. And she has confidence to, you know, talk to other kids. And that is something that means so much to me. So that is definitely a, a goal of mine is to keep that, you know, as one of my priorities while still training for the games and games and doing that. Um, 
So it's, yeah, that's, that's, I would say one of the bigger ones. Very cool. That's awesome. Have you ever thought about doing like a YouTube channel with like the CrossFit Kids stuff? I haven't. I haven't. That's a, that's definitely a good idea though. We went during the pandemic, we were doing like a weekly video that we would upload mm -hmm. um, and got a lot of, a lot of good feedback from those. So it's definitely something that we could for sure start up again. Yeah. I would highly recommend that. I guarantee you, like you see all these kids, especially, especially my kid, um, he's six and mm -hmm. um, all I do is sit down and watch YouTube of like kids playing with toys and like, they don't even play toy. They don't even play toys. It's just like, or kids are playing video games and they're watching it. It's like, right. Go out and do stuff. And so, um, mm -hmm. I've, I've told this before in my podcast, but we, my son and I, we do this thing called next station. So I have like a gym in my basement. So what we do is he uses my, you know, lacrosse stick as a barbell and he'll do like snatches, clean and jerks and like all that stuff. And like back squats. And we'll do that for a minute and then we'll have like, or like 30 seconds. Cause he doesn't have the attention span for a minute. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, it, like then after that, we'll give him like 10 seconds to switch and he'll get on the elliptical or something like that. And so that's like kind of what we do a little bit. And so I'm like trying to teach him how to catch a football or like play goalie, just like kind of start doing that stuff. But, you know, I think awesome. a YouTube page would be, you know, especially with you doing it, I think that'd be huge. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a great idea. Anything to get kids away from, you know, just sitting all day. Yeah, especially this year where they that's all they really had the choice to do, mm -hmm. you know, not being in school. Yeah. So where, where can people reach out to you if they have any questions or like want to ask, like, you know, ask you about Misfit Athletics or, you know, get that promo code for Sharp in the Ass? Yeah. So, yeah. So code Carol on everything. Uh, <laughs> C-A-R-O-L. That's it. Um, I am. I'm pretty good about reaching back out to people on Instagram um, messages, but on Instagram and my email is super easy, Carolina at misfitathletics.com. So those are those are the two primary uh, you know, platforms that I'm on. You're not on TikTok yet? I have one, but I just watch it. <laughs> I don't do them. Maybe, maybe eventually I'll be able to. I'll have to take some tips from Kaylee Adams at the games, maybe. <laughs> oh my god, she kills it. Absolutely kills it. She's, oh yeah, she does. Unreal. Well, well, thank you very much for <laughs> You know, obviously taking the time because I know you have like a super busy schedule and, you know, I was it was awesome getting a chance to talk to you. And I obviously I'd love to have you back on again, like after the games and just kind of get what your experience is. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for for having me. I I love talking to other people, not so much about myself, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah. So anytime <laughs> and I'm, I'm happy to circle back around after the games to talk about that. All right, very cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh,